Hey there teachers, this is a quick little tutorial and overview of how to get set up and started on Google Classroom. So um, the first thing you're going to want to do is just load Google Classroom up. You might load it um, as an app on the Chromebook. Um, the, you might have a little icon down here for using a Chromebook and Google Classroom app could be there. But you can get to Google Classroom on any device just by going to classroom.google.com. And um, you'll need to make sure that you're signed into your Google account and you can see that you know I'm signed into this account here. I have a sample class already started here that I'll show you in a second. But if this is your first time using Google Classroom, you're going to have to agree to a few things. Um, and you're gonna definitely wanna make sure that when the window asks if you're a student or a teacher, that you click teacher. Um, because if you click student, you're not gonna be allowed to set up any classes and it's kind of a hassle to, to get that changed in the future. So I'm going to uh, so I'm going to start by just creating a new class. I'll click this plus sign over here, and I have the option to join a class or create a class. And since I'm a teacher, I'll click the create class button. I can give my class a name. You know, I'll just say test, and and you can also give it a section. So I could put like American history and then C block or whatever um, naming convention you use. So here is my test class. It's going to be created. And this is the window that you'll see when you first make your class. Now, a couple things to point out. First of all, you're going to want to uh, realize where your class code is down here in this box. It will always be there, um, and you can change the code at any point, like resetting it if you need to, or you can disable it so that no new students can join. But this is the code you're going to give to kids um, to allow them to join your class. So you'll definitely just want to make a note of that. Um, the way Google Classroom works is everything is going to appear right here in this stream. So you can either post announcements or assignments. An announcement is something that, um, the rule of thumb for what I tell people is, an announcement is something that you want people to see or do, but not turn in. Um, so I might say, uh, today in class, go to the website uh, linked below. So I don't really want kids to turn anything in. I just want them, they just want to give them a place to click a link. So I can click this um, link button right here and I could say ESPN.com. That would be a fun class. So now if I click post, you'll see that this website has been linked. So this is a really, really easy way to give your students digital resources. Like if you have a few websites you want kids to explore in class instead of having them type it in, you can just kind of list them all down there. In addition um, to links, you can um, upload files from your computer and post online. You can attach things straight from your Google Drive or you can embed a YouTube video um, right into Google Classroom and it would be embedded so they can click play and watch it without going to um, YouTube itself. So just to show you what this option looks like, let's say I want to attach a Google Drive item. So something in my drive, I want to display for kids to see. This could be like directions to a project or anything that they don't really need to turn in. You know, I could um, go here and say, all right, I want you to have this, assess this assignment or this assessment. I don't want you to do anything with it. I just want you to be able to read it. Um, I would then click read the directions, put a little note as what you want kids to do. And your or announcements posted. Now, assignments are, are very different. So if I click the assignment tab, um, there's a couple of things that are worth noting here. Now, assignments are something that Google Classroom is expecting students to do and then like give back to you. So it's a Dropbox. So I would only use the assignment if I plan on either giving kids a due date for something or collecting it back through Google Classroom. So I could say like Africa project. You know, um, do the project that's linked here. Right. And then I could set a due date, like, all right, I want this Africa project due at the end of March, and I want it done by midnight. Now, I have these same options. I could include various links, things, um, you know, different websites I want kids to go to. I could embed some videos. Um, but the thing I really want to focus on here is this, uh, this last option here, the Google Drive, because this is the part that makes the assignment feature on Google Classroom really powerful. So if I click attach Google Drive item again, and I find a item like this one, the really, really cool part about this is 
Um, before, if you wanted kids to, to have a Google Doc, you'd have to like have the kids make a copy off a link you posted. It was kind of a cumbersome thing. But now, um, by clicking right here, I can choose the option, make a copy for each student. What that's going to do is it's going to, um, whenever a student signs on the Google Classroom, it will automatically make this copy of a document and put it right in the student's folder. So now when I click Assign, this project will come up. It will tell me how many kids have turned it in and how many haven't turned it in. Of course, there's no one in this class yet because I just made it. Um, but when a student clicks on this file, it will be their own individual copy that they have editing rights to, and they um, can fill it in like a template or you could, you could ask questions and the kids would be able to type their answers in. It's basically like a copy machine. It makes copies and hands things out for you with just a couple of clicks. So that's a really, really nice organizational tool. Now, a couple of things outside of the stream. This is where you do most of your work. You notice that the newer things always go to the top, the older things always go to the bottom. And as you post things, um, it kind of just fills in um, blog-like and kids are used to this format. A um, couple other things you might be interested in knowing about Google Classroom. On the About section, you can um, type information about your class that won't change. And you can also add materials. So you may have noticed that on the stream, as more and more things get posted, the older stuff goes all the way down. Um, this might be a nice spot to add something like um, class expectations or a syllabus or something like that that kids might need to reference often and not have to scroll all the way through the stream to find something that was posted a few months ago. Um, now, on the Students tab, this is an easy way. You will um, see a list of all of your students when this is populated, and you can easily like click kids and um, send them emails straight from Google Classroom. So it's a nice way, instead of having to have a um, like an Outlook um, distribution list or something like that, you can easily like select all your students and send an email right from Google Classroom. It's quite easy. Um, that's just about it. It's really not too hard to use. You can, of course, uh, change your your photo up here. If you don't want these old looking desks, you can, you know, select a theme or upload your own photo and select something a little bit more. Oh, look at this one. A nice book heart. I'm sure that teachers love that one. So there's um, a lot of different things you can do. Now, um, over here, this is where you get to your settings. You can get back to your, your homepage. So I can see that um, I can get back to my other classes really quickly. I can click home and return back to my main screen. Um, all of those kind of things. That's pretty much it. That's how you use Google Classroom and how you do a few things uh, really quickly. So that'll, that'll be enough to get you started.